Hi, Ann. Hi, Bob. How you doing? I'm doing well out here in uh, beautiful, sunny Wisconsin, but I'm worried about you that you're about to get slammed by the storm of the century or something. What's going on? So they say uh, it's supposed to uh, pass. At, at last check, it was going to pass more or less directly over Philadelphia, and we're about an hour's drive north of Philadelphia. So uh, if you live where I live and you aspire to go purchase D batteries, I mm -hmm. wish you luck because they <laughs> there have been none since uh, yesterday, and, and we're taping this on Sunday. People are very people are very advanced in their preparations here. Well, if uh, lights go off, electricity goes off, um, is that going to, do we have to think about that having a big enough time window that it would actually affect whether people could vote on election day or whether they could See, I kind of doubt it'll be quite that grim. I mean, I will say that, that, you know, we've had the power here go off for a couple of days at a time, and it looks as if these winds will be more extreme than we've ever had, mm -hmm. so you'll have more limbs falling on power lines than ever. So it could be, we could be a while without power, but even so, I mean, the storm really, you know, the storm hits very early Tuesday morning. That gives them a week. I don't think, mm -hmm. I don't think there'll be that kind of effect. I think there is the potential for, you know, the Obama administration to be perceived as either failing to deal with this adequately or, or dealing with it very well. But I don't think, it's kind of a can't win proposition for Obama, I think. If you know, well, I don't know. I think I, I saw that he had to cancel a bunch of events, and it might be that he have, if he has to centralize himself in Washington and then deal with some national emergency, that that might actually uh, give him prominence. And if he handles it well, people might look to him and, and you know, favor a stability or something of that kind. I it guess. I was just thinking, you know, people expect these things to be handled well, and you don't get a lot of credit mm -hmm. for that. I mean, you know, it's not like you've got the cameras out following the FEMA workers as they do their job, although maybe he'll arrange for that. But, the, uh, but you know, historically, the only times I remember these things having an impact is when things go badly, like uh, Katrina, the obvious uh, mm -hmm. prime recent example. But, it occurred but to I don't me, know. It occurred to me that um, if the coastal cities are, you know, swamped, flooded, or uh, people are impaired in their ability to move around or just distracted by their personal problems and don't mm -hmm. vote, that it could skew the, the, the uh, who wins and who loses in particular states just because I would imagine Democrats being more concentrated in places like Philadelphia as compared to upstate Pennsylvania, and that could tip the election, which uh, yeah. uh, it occurs to me that that would be Ironic after all of these issues, but after Obama having said a few years ago that he was going to lower the uh, the sea levels to be uh, defeated in re-election because or, or to keep them from rising. Rose. Yeah. Well, in theory, there are like I guess three or so swing states that could be effective. I mean, Virginia mm -hmm. and the coastal areas. Although the storm is largely north of there, there will be some effect. If you consider Pennsylvania swing state. Mm -hmm. That's going to get hit for sure. Um, and they say the storm will have some force when it hits Ohio. Now, traditionally, they said bad weather hurts Democrats because, uh, you know, presumably lower income people have more trouble getting out in spite of bad weather. But I will say with this early voting thing that may, you know, those may be the kinds of voters that, that, that the Obama ground game has gotten to the polls already. So the effect. Or, but there may also be a lot of people that they were hoping to get in this upcoming week in which they'll be... The well, that's, that's, that's a good point. Is, is, that's really what's going to get hurt, is probably these next three days when, when, when the Obama uh, people would have been bussing people to the polls. So in that sense, it might hurt Obama. Of course, Romney's trying to do the same thing, but, but reportedly his people are not as good at it. But see, I thought this was a variation on the normal weather issues because it's coming in from the coast, and it seems to me these very populous, populous cities are going to get the brunt of the storm and that that would uh, skew the balance of the two parties within the state favoring Republicans because it would because be the Democrats. Because the, be, the rural voters will be on dry land, you mean? Yeah, just for so impact on urban voters. Um, I guess that's true. I mean, as it happens, Philadelphia, yeah, in, in, in Pennsylvania, um, it's not so true in Ohio because it's it's not it's not a coastal situation there. But I don't know. I mean, I, I think uh, I think you've actually hit on the the most interesting thing is that maybe it's the the early voting will actually get impeded mm -hmm. to some extent by election day itself. I think things are going to be cleared out. You know, you know and in thing. general. I should say these storms often fail to meet expectations. Yeah, another thing that's worth noting 
in, in with this huge storm is the value of the electoral college because each state has its number of electoral votes based on its population, not based on how many people went out and voted. So let's say there's a horrible storm all up the East Coast where, you know, obviously uh, Obama has more voters there, plans to get all of those Northeastern um, electoral votes. But if there was a horrible storm and maybe a very small proportion uh, voted, if there were mm -hmm. a popular vote, then the Northeast would just get uh, disproportionately less weight in the Electoral College. But if you have the electoral votes assigned by states, then it doesn't matter what proportion of the people within that particular state vote. That state maintains its proportion within the Electoral College. That's a value of the Electoral College. I mean, if you have a storm all up down, mm. all up the east, eastern coast, when it's nice weather in the uh, other two-thirds of the country, um, if we went on popular vote, that would completely redistribute where the voting power was. Yeah, but at the same time, within a given state, the storm may, as we've suggested, right. so disproportionately right. affect the vote that it, right. that it effectively disenfranchises a certain social class right. or something. Right. And it may be, let's say uh, everybody in New York City can't vote. There's no other plan to get them to vote. And then on the upstate New York people are suddenly empowered and they get to control all whatever it is, 29 uh, electoral votes, with something like that. That is alarming, actually. It's I mean, very weird, you know. But, I mean, but if there's the storm... disproportionate voting all the time because of the Electoral College. It doesn't matter how many people vote in that state. Those people control that many electoral votes. But it's a safeguard, too, as I was saying. People forget about how much it actually operates as a safeguard. It is interesting. If the storm hit, like, five days later, it's possible, now that I think of it, that it could turn New York into a red state. Right. You know, because the New York City is going to get crushed it, uh, well yeah. not crushed but 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 could get seriously dislocated but, but, but Obama's ahead it. by like 25 points in New York it's Pennsylvania where there's a closer uh, gap uh -huh. between that's actually a toss-up state so I think if you it, it Penn, Philadelphia has this huge problem of uh, people not being able to get out or being distracted by their own problems that could yeah. uh, tip uh, Pennsylvania and that would tip the election wouldn't it yeah. Now, I, I hope think, by it's the way, a dramatic, uh, whoever wins, wins very clearly, and that there isn't a win by some fluky thing like that or by Electoral College. No, although you could you could well have Obama lose the popular vote and win the election. That that seems conceivable, regard, yeah, uh, you know, regardless of the storm. Yeah, I hope that doesn't yeah, well, happen. It I happens. hope whoever wins, wins by a clear margin, and we don't have some horrible ordeal. Or yeah. a sense that maybe there was some unfairness and that made the difference, or... Some crazy ballot in Florida. Some crazy Supreme Court ruling, for example. Do you want to talk sorry, about the Sorry, Supreme Court? sorry, sorry. I don't want to say I'm bitter. Sorry. Yeah, do you, I'm, you I'm want really to talk over about that. The, I'm totally so, over it. Yeah, you know, it was it was rough. It, it was. It was rough. It, it was. <laughs> it was interesting, but uh, um, I hope that never happens again. Yeah, that okay. was bad. I think the Supreme Court. Do you think the Supreme Court has been careful lately that it's become conscious of how, uh, not only because of that ruling, but because of a couple of rulings, that it's become concerned about being perceived as a, as a systematically right wing force and that maybe that affected its its ruling on Obamacare and some recent ruling on uh, I think you know, voting are, regulation at the state level? I think there are depths of ingeniousness to what Chief Justice Roberts did in the Obamacare case that we humble mortals can only begin to contemplate. And he was playing, if he was playing it politically, it was a very long political game that we don't quite understand. I think it would be wrong to say that they're just pulling back and, uh, and uh, trying to stay out of politics. I would think that yeah, I don't think they're intimidated. Well, that way. I, mean, I think the basic position is to decide the cases according to the law, and then the extent to which they vary away from that, I don't think it is to become more restrained. I think yeah. it might be played out in a more um, a more I mean, deviously it, clever way. And I think uh, if Obama uh, uh, if Obama care had gone down, it would have affected what would we be doing right now? What would be happening in the election right now? I think it hurt Obama for Obamacare to survive. and uh, That was your theory all along, yes, that he would mm -hmm. profit politically by losing the case. Oh, even to the point that I had a conspiracy theory that the uh, Solicitor General did such a bad job at oral argument because they actually were trying to throw it and they wanted to and, lose. And so correspondingly, you could have the theory that Roberts gave him the ruling in order to hurt him politically, right? Isn't that the flip right. side of your conspiracy theory? Uh, well, in order to keep the court political balance 
proper and also maybe to affect what would happen to the court in the future. I think if mm. Romney is elected, people who are more um, aligned with the conservatives will be appointed. I mean, we think about it, if, you're, if your theory is right, that, that uh, a win in the Supreme Court for Obamacare was bad for Obama politically, then, then uh, giving him the case was win-win from the point of a Republican jurist, right? Because they, it makes the court, on the one hand, look more impartial, while in, a, while in fact being the opposite. That's right, ingenious. And, it, and the way he, things were done with the commerce power, remember it was held not to be supported by the commerce power, right. so we have a decision that limits the commerce power. Meanwhile, he said something about taxing, which didn't really change the taxing power very much. And it has a built-in kind of time bomb to it because it only fit the taxing power because it wasn't regarded as a penalty, even though it was labeled a penalty. Mm -hmm. uh, so that means that as Obamacare goes into play, the amount that people are taxed, and it's understood as a tax, that's why it's constitutional, uh, mm -hmm. will be relatively small. That's why it was considered not a penalty. But if the relative smallness of the penalty, the, which is only a tax and not a penalty, if it doesn't work to change what people do and people just pay the tax instead of buying insurance, then the whole scheme won't work and people and they'll have to raise the amount in order to coerce people to do it. If they do that, it won't get the taxing power. It'll be coercion, and there's no commerce power to fall back on, so it'll collapse at that point. I'm not you sure know, if I followed all that, but, correct, but tell me if I've got well, the basic... Well, play this recording back, and you'll see. Yeah, I'll get there. it eventually. But, yeah. but, but tell me if we can move to a more elementary level, if I've got the basic thing right. They said, yes, on the one hand, if you think of this, the penalty being levied against people who don't buy health insurance as a penalty per se, then this is... Uh, a, an undue exercise of then it federal put, regulation. No, 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 it, wait, wait, i got to correct you. No. Yeah, uh, it's a violation it, of the Commerce Clause. No, no, it's already a violation of the Commerce Clause. That's established. If you're regulating, you need a power that lets you regulate. If you're taxing, mm -hmm. you need to be within the taxing power. Robert's decision tells you where the end of the taxing power is and said the taxing power supported this relatively small tax. But if it was a more coercive amount that was charged, in other words, an amount that was designed to make people have to buy the insurance, which, of course, is the point, then it wouldn't be within the tax power. It would need to be a regulation, but there is no regulatory power supporting it. So when the scheme goes into operation, if the relatively small tax doesn't work to shape people's behavior, make them buy insurance, I get it. then the option of raising the amount in, to make it coercive, there's nowhere to go with that. That's already I determined see. to be unconstitutional. I see your point. Okay. So Roberts is claiming that it's such an ineffective incentive right. that we can consider it a tax. And I mean, if, it, and if it's odd? ineffective, it won't change people's behavior, right. and Which the is what it's won't supposed work. To be. So it's yeah. a slow-motion topple. We just haven't seen it go down yet. Well, no, but I mean, who's to say whether it's affecting people's behavior? It also can just kind of establish a norm, you know, where it's not so much that it's so punitive to not buy health insurance. It's just that, well, it's kind of the law you do it, you know? Um, but you like the way people drive the speed limit and so forth. All right, we'll see how people exactly behave. Like. So do you think people just but, 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 um, law? Okay. You know, what, what seems odd about the ruling, just to close this out and, and clinch our, our, our growing, I think, agreement between us that, uh, that this may have been a conspiracy. Um, I'm kind of half kidding. I but assume John Roberts is brilliant. You think he's well, well, here's the weird thing, it seems to me. From the very beginning, long before it was even went to the Supreme Court, I heard discussions that, you know, they should have called it a tax in the, in the legislation. But they Because then it's a less no, controversial they, thing yeah, and more didn't. clearly legal. But, but they didn't. And, and, I mean, did the Solicitor General even argue that they should yeah, consider yeah, it a tax? Or did Roberts just... That was, just, that was just in the argument. That was in the what? argument. That it was, was in okay. the argument all along. Okay. They didn't call it a tax because they didn't want to tell people they were right. They were saying it wasn't right. a tax. Right. That was what was so funny about it because it was political. They were but anyway, I'm, I'm willing to agree with you that, uh, that, that this was a sinister uh, Machiavellian move on Roberts' part because that strengthens the argument. That we Thanks should for elect putting Obama. words in my mouth while agreeing with me. It's nice that of you to agree with me, but you, I, I'm you have, not going to say you it. You have strengthened the argument, thank you for that, Anne, that we need to elect Obama so he can, uh, with his appointments to the Supreme Court, um, do something about the dangerous right-wing Machiavellianism on the court that you've just isolated. Thank you for that. Well, I, it, I'm, I'm glad you see yourself receiving presents that you're not really getting. It must be very... I hope, I hope you're enjoying yourself over there. I think you're very clear.
And, no. and I thank you for being so clear. No, I think that all of the justices have an element of political judgment in what they're doing. Certainly the liberals do. It's not like the liberal. I mean, uh, you know, this quality is spread around. They, yeah, I mean, Roe versus Wade was pretty creative. The, you know, I grant you that was a, that was. You no, know, I'm, I'm interested a, in the way um, Obama has been and his supporters have been saying very clearly that Obama, that if if Romney wins and he'll get uh, an appointment or two out of the a, a loss of one of the liberal justices, and they will. It's a certainty. I'm sure of it. He said that in the Rolling Stone interview. Overturn Roe v. Wade. I think uh, that's a, a ridiculous assertion. Uh, typical um, inflammatory emotionalism. I don't believe that at all. Well, don't you think... Well, it depends. It depends on how... Ron, you never know what it's Romney would do. It's not, it's, not, it's not beyond conceiving that, that he would uh, choose a pro-life justice. And, and, and look, it's not crazy to overturn Roe versus Wade anyway. As I said, it's a pretty creative ruling. But right. it's, it's been around so long. A uh, major decision was made about overruling it 20 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, the idea that we would go through that exercise again and that after all of these years of women being used to having a particular right with respect to their own bodies, that that would be taken away. I don't think it's politically doable. I think that a president actually will avoid it. I think it would hurt the Republican Party a lot if it happened. I mean, they can only do this abortion politics stuff. Uh, because it's actually not affecting much of anything, because the right mm -hmm. is there. I think the Republican Party benefits from having the right there. But if the right were removed, it would just put it back into the political sphere. It's not as if the court would recognize that the unborn has a right not to be aborted. It would just mm -hmm. be a matter of it returning it to the political process to make some statutes about it, and, and then we would uh, fight about whatever it is we actually want in the in the political realm. And I think we would end up with the pretty much the same right of abortion would be really called the bluff of a lot of people in the Republican Party. That might be a healthy way to get over our, our endless uh, national obsession with it. But I don't, think, uh, I don't think we'll lose the right. I think people are too accustomed to having it and the, the shock of taking away a right that we've had so long. I don't see the court doing that, even okay. even if it were packed with some more conservatives. But I don't think Romney would appoint uh, extreme conservatives. I think he'll appoint uh, the kind of moderate conservative that's likely to actually disappoint conservatives. I think he's, uh, it's, it's very you know, hard like to Justice say. Justice Souter, Justice Stevens, these were appointments of Republican presidents that were uh, reliable liberals over the years. So I don't think there's that much to be afraid of. Yeah, I don't know. I I I, 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 I think it's. I think there's no telling. He, but both because he's a little bit of a an etch a sketch, and because I, I don't totally understand the politics, the political forces that would be brought to bear on him. I mean, I think it's fair to say the pro-life constituency is not totally impotent within the Republican Party. But but anyway, you know, we we discovered in talking before this that we each have a theory about what happened in the first debate that is not yes. the standard theory. Now, for all we know, they're the same theory. We have that'd the same. Be, that'd be cool because we're agreeing about everything. Yeah, yeah, almost. we agree on the right wing conspiracy in the Supreme Court. I was glad to find that out. Now, what is your theory about the um, the first debate? I think that Obama had been running the campaign to try to make it about Romney, to try to paint Romney as some sort of a villain. And what Romney needed to do in the first debate was simply, well, was to make the election again about Obama. I think you're talking about reelecting the president. Does he deserve reelection or do we want change? And given the economy and so forth, the election really ought to be about Obama. Do we want more of Obama? But Obama was fighting defensively to try to turn it into an election that was actually about Romney, this weird villain out there. So mm -hmm. once Romney showed up and was a regular guy who was pretty reasonable, uh, then the focus went back onto Obama. And what we were really seeing was the normal Obama. And we were looking at him because yeah. we weren't focusing on Romney being this strange character he'd been painted to be. And that's why Obama looks so bad. You know, when I, no, uh, I saw the debate... Don't you, agree, don't you agree Obama was much better in the second, more, here's what more I would say vigorous, dynamic, and articulate in the second and third debates? Well, because he real, well, 
he had to change because the strategy that he brought to the first debate didn't work. But I under I can see what he was trying to do in the first debate. He thought he could just be there, the guy that everybody likes much more than this plastic robot man who so awful. As if he believed his own press that Romney was not not a normal person, not likable. And remember, uh, Obama coasted into the nomination in '08 by just being more likable than Hillary, who was likable enough and so forth. So Obama's kind of been a little complacent uh, and and Pat and uh, about assuming everybody likes him. And part of the way he gets people to like him is by being very relaxed and seeming normal and so forth. So he was doing that routine. I'm just a regular guy, and I know everyone likes me, and they're not going to like this other guy, so this will be easy. And when I watched the first debate, I didn't dislike him. I didn't see what was so bad, and I was surprised at how negative people were. Right. And I even rewatched the debate knowing that they had presented him as so negative to try to see what it was that was so bad. And I watched the whole thing about, again. About I did Obama, not think Obama, yes, I did not think Obama was that bad. I think he was the same person we've been seeing all along. But a lot of people reacted to it because they had developed an idea of Obama and an idea of Romney that wasn't well aligned to reality. I think Obama behaved in a very normal way, and he was following a strategy, and it was all about an assumption that we would like him, and Romney's terrible, and that would just work. But Romney was good enough that mm -hmm. it, it blew up the whole Obama okay. strategy. Well, and after that, he had to scramble. So, of course, he was different in the next two debates. Meanwhile, all Romney needed to do was show up and be the same guy, be presidential, and, and basically just stand there while Obama tried to do whatever he could. It, it went desperate. Um, so it was different. Personally, I prefer the Obama of the first debate, but uh, well, but I think that I think that but that's the main point. Obama had yeah. tried to make it about Romney, uh, yeah. and it failed well, in the I first think, debate. I mean, I think. Well, first of all, I, I agree that that Obama, if you went back and looked at, it, I think would not look as bad as people think. I think, for one thing, he was a victim of unduly high expectations. I wrote before the debate that. Obama's not a great, great in debates. Romney's pretty good, and it's crazy to go in expecting Obama to prevail. But I think many people went in expecting uh, a more dynamic Obama than they had right to expect. I think that I think that's one thing. I think your point that look, Obama had tried to paint Romney in a negative light, and Romney came in and didn't didn't seem to fit that type is correct but i think your version of it is is i have a version of that too that's a little different i think your version is closer to the conventional wisdom uh, in other words i think the conventional wisdom is romney had been painted as this heartless plutocrat mm -hmm. and he comes in and starts acting like this moderate and obama doesn't know what to do he, he failed he failed to strip the credibility uh from that presentation of self on on romney's part okay that, that's kind of what you're saying, right? Uh, okay. I mean, I mean and, and, I I think, and I think I've kind of, I mean, I think a number of people, certainly there was emphasis on how Romney had shifted his presentation to moderate and it worked. I think there was something a little different going on. I mean, I think there was some of that. There was some of that. But here's the thing that I think is underappreciated, and I think this is the reason that what happened in the debate, the, the ground Obama lost it was not so much his fault, and it was probably ground he was going to lose anyway. And this is what I mean, okay? Before the debate, Romney had not just been de de depicted as a heartless plutocrat who doesn't care about 47% of America. He had also, as it happens, and this was kind of surprising, weird, but it just happened, he was depicted as a bumbler. A guy, things he's just never go right. He goes to England, he offends everyone in London. He's got, he, he, he does this fundraiser. And God, he's, he's secretly videotaped. You know, he had, there was this narrative that this guy is a horrible politician, a horrible campaigner. He keeps putting his foot in his mouth, you know. And, and I think people who, you know, you're relatively undecided voters, you, maybe you're soft supporters of Obama or you're out and out undecideds, mm -hmm. went into the, the, the debate not having paid close attention. They bought into the narrative that Obama's not just, just heartless but incompetent and bumbling. And you a guy Romney. showed up. You who's Romney, Romney, Romney. I'm sorry, Romney. Romney. And the guy shows up. He's totally capable. Of course, he's done. he does PowerPoint for a living, right? He's like a corporate pitch man. He's actually very good in these things. And people go, you know, people who were never enthusiastic about Obama but thought that this guy was even worse go, well, wait a second, this guy looks like he could be president. 
He looks okay. And, you know, I think... So Obama left open that vulner vulnerability by going so negative on Romney, it was easy for Romney to show up and not be that bad. Well, maybe, but I, you could also argue that there was enough dissatisfaction with Obama, right. uh, partly because he's an incumbent when the economy is not great, that he had to go negative. That, that was the only thing that was going to work. Mm -hmm. and, then he, and then he surrendered some of the votes he had picked up that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but in, in my scenario... People are going to discover that Romney, that these relatively underinformed voters were going to discover sooner or later that Romney is actually a reasonably capable looking guy. And if they, and if they weren't enthusiastic about Obama, they were going to vote for him. So you know, if you it, want change, can you vote for Romney or is Romney too horrible? If Romney isn't too horrible and you want change, you right. vote for Romney. By the way, I have a completely different theory about what went wrong with the first debate. And that was uh, that... A different uh, theory from your other different theory? This is completely different, okay? Okay. Put, put, Even by Ann Althaus standards, this one is weird. Well, I didn't say it was weird. I just said it's completely different from the other theory. I don't, I don't think okay. it's weird at all. I think that what happened in Benghazi on uh, September 11th, and, and this was, I think, I think the first debate was on the uh, 3rd of October. Mm -hmm. So this was a couple of weeks after that. I think that... That it was uh, that what we're learning now about what happened. He, of course, knew what happened on that day about the seven-hour firefight, about the two uh, seals who uh, fought off hundreds of uh, attackers and begging for help. Say, uh, you know, the things are starting to come up now. Obama already knew all of those things, and they were scrambling to try to keep that from destroying the election. And uh, he was, re it was har a harrowing, it's still harrowing for them. They were desperate, and that's uh, overwhelmed them, and that's gotten in the way of just focusing on the things that were going to come up in the first debate. And he really was, uh, he looked bad, he was tired, he was weary, because something terrible was happening. Um, that could be that they were distracted by that. I um, hope they were distracted. That would speak well for them. They should be distracted. Yeah. I, there's all kinds of theories that have merit. I think it's not totally crazy to say it was the altitude. I mean, Romney, Obama well, that flew the in. the lamest thing in the no, world. No, but that's not crazy. Have you ever been? Uh, Obama flew in the day of the debate. Romney had been there, had had at least one night's sleep there. Makes a difference, man. You they know, were if Obama high. can't deal with the altitude change. He that's shouldn't like the be three president. A, it's like Hillary's old 3 a.m. phone call. Oh, they woke me up in the middle of the night, so I wasn't at my best. You, you know, too bad. Yeah, but you, Anne, you isn't it a little president. more common? Isn't it a little more common to be sleeping in the course of a 24-hour cycle than it is to have just been elevated by 5,000 feet relative to sea level? Oh, good lord! How hours? high does a plane go? What? He's in planes all the time. They go well, higher. Well, yeah, but than then the plane. Low. No, but planes are pressurized. I don't think you get the the same thing. The air's no thinner in a plane. I think. I think it is. The pressure in a plane is the equivalent of what altitude? Not sea level. <laughs> I'll um, Google that. You want me to Google that right now? I could find. Well, that it's definitely out. artificially pressurized. I don't know. Yeah, but it's not pressurized to sea level pressure. I think it's pressurized something more like Denver. But what if you want me to? Look? I could. I'll Google this right now. If you I want think to. that would be an, a, a, an unwise use of your time right now, Anne. Okay. Frankly, you say something. Now, now it's your turn to speak. Okay. So what else is there? I mean. Who's going to, um, where are we, who's going to, I will say, that third debate totally, Romney has zero momentum as we speak. The polls haven't really changed. If you look at all the tracking polls, no changes in the last five, six days, basically. So, if anything, a slight, ever so slight drift toward Obama, like well less than a percentage point since the final debate. But right now, it's flatlined. And so... I don't it know. doesn't matter what we say. You can stare at the polls all you want. You can run them through any kind of crazy manipulations like Nate Silver at the New York Times. Whatever is done, it's not going to change the outcome. What happens is going to happen. So Actually, it could. Well, no, what people I say feel like about what's going to happen at these can affect polls. Every day I'm checking the new polls. I'm looking at the uh, uh, Real Clear Politics app. I mean, I have never done this so much. It just seems bizarre. I, I mean, I shouldn't know, we be using our minds for something a little no, more? No, this is this is serious. A, a, a problem. There's some kind of syndrome. We should give a name to the syndrome. And I think it's only become a problem because every election now, the it's online, the on, yeah, the capacity so for online advantage. addiction grows because the interactive tools get better and better, and there's right. more and more statistical aggregation sites. Yeah, I, I like the barely... sites that have the uh, electoral college map, and then you can start clicking to see what you think is going to happen and see how it came, comes out. I did that the other day, and I, I just did what I thought was going to happen, and it came out 269 to 269, and I was just uh, freaked out by that because that would be horrible. <laughs>
No, it's a serious problem. You realize problem. how likely that is to happen. It's not. Uh, it's not. They that say unlikely. it could happen. It could come out just. And then what would happen then? The House of Representatives votes or something? House of, it's kind of weird. The House of Representatives votes for the president and the Senate votes for the uh, vice president. So oh, it's possible shoot. to end up with Romney and Biden. The House would go for Romney. And, and they vote by state. It's not like everybody gets a vote. So California mm. gets one vote. Wyoming gets one vote. It adds up like that. Isn't that interesting? That's actually not as comical as, as Obama. It's more like, it makes it more like the Senate, where the states are equally represented. Yeah. Well, that would be a bummer. <laughs> that would be a bummer. The, so wait, but you're in Wisconsin. Now, I heard a theory lately. I mean, most, most Democrats are assuming Wisconsin is in Obama's pocket. It's certainly generally depicted as leaning strongly toward Obama. Um, Rasmussen had them equal yesterday. And, and we did? obviously just real. Rasmussen has... Yeah, but Rasmussen has a Republican lean. It's a robo-poll. No, and who knows what, 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 what kinds of people? What kinds of people answer those robo polls? I don't, Come I don't, on, I don't, I don't who know doesn't who hang up on that shit? Polls, but this, but I would just like to say that uh, Governor Walker won the recall election. Uh, Ron Johnson ousted uh, uh, Russ Feingold for the Senate seat two years ago. I don't know what's going to happen with uh, Tommy Thompson and Tammy Baldwin here, the Tommy and Tammy thing. Uh, but. Uh, we have a Republican legislature. Well, they did a little recalling and rebalanced the Senate to the Democrats, but the, the Republicans are going to get the Senate back, the state Senate. So if we have a Republican legislature, a Republican governor, yeah. and one or two Republican senators, why wouldn't we get a Republican winning uh, president? And, you know, obviously also Paul Ryan is from Wisconsin, so there's a Wisconsin... Damn. You tell me. Are you are you predicting a, a, a Wisconsin win for Romney? Oh, I think it'll be close. I don't know. I mean, well, I what difference does it matter what I predict? <laughs> you know, I'm very massive. You're, you're a Wisconsin expert. As far as I'm expert. concerned, everyone in the world is for Obama, and anybody who's for Romney wouldn't uh, dare put a sign out uh, lest uh, someone, uh, uh, you know, vandalize their car. Or <laughs> well, that's just in Madison, though, right? I, that's what I'm saying. You ask me yeah. how it looks from here? Yeah. It looks like yeah. a, a totally left-wing place. The only thing is maybe... Uh, you know, Obama's not lefty enough. He he's a big disappointment because he didn't go far enough left. Yeah, the um, I I don't know. I mean, if if Romney wins Wisconsin, Obama is in trouble. I think most people would say. I think that if you if you do fiddle with those maps and you give Romney Wisconsin, you can give Obama Ohio, and Romney can still win. But it's in a scenario like that where you could end up with the two sixty nine two sixty nine. You yeah, know, but New I would Hampshire also say, can make the difference. But I would also say that if if Obama wins or if Romney wins Wisconsin, that suggests that the polling at the state level, I mean, unless it changes between now and the election, if the polling looks like it has looked over the last week or two in Wisconsin, and yet Romney wins it, that would suggest that maybe the polling is so skewed toward Obama in a number of swing states that Romney would just run the table or something. You know, I, well, if I it's like if Obama wins Florida, I kind of feel like like that, it could that, be a sweep. And if Romney uh, wins Wisconsin, uh, I feel like well, who do you really think is going to win? If you're really honest, if you were betting, your, you had to bet you had a thousand dollars to bet. And Me? You had to bet and you weren't. Well, I mean, I know whatever you say here, you're you're, you're hoping to make the outcome that you want more likely. And that would overwhelm. No, 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 I'm uh, I'm an honest broker. In fact, I just uh posted a thing raising the prospect yeah i mean i want obama to win but i just posted a thing on the atlantic raising the prospect that the that the undecideds could break could well break toward romney and if i were just a propagandist i mean if i were like the left-wing version of jennifer rubin and just mm -hmm. a propagandist um i would not raise prospects like that um so so if you ask me though i would say i don't know i mean the, the poll if the polls are right Obama wins if you hold the election today. On the other hand, even if the you polls don't trust are right, those polls. what you don't trust the polls. Well, there's also the fact that even if those polls are right, they've got five percent that they're calling likely voters who are saying they haven't decided. So even if you held the election today, I guess mm -hmm. some of them would come out and make up their mind and vote. And although some of them would probably sit home, and the ones who voted might break toward Romney. So yeah. I don't I know. Think, I'm going to say I think. Either, Rom either Obama will just barely win, or Romney will win by a lot. Um, 
either Obama will barely win or Romney will win by a lot. That seems counterintuitive. No, it totally fits with it, it what seems you like, just said. It seems like, generally, the person who is widely, who is... Who, who is expected to win, and right now, looking at the betting markets, the statistical projections, and so on, that's Obama, generally you would say either that person wins by a lot or the other person barely wins. But you're saying the opposite. Well, that, that's why it's such a fascinating thing to say. That's why it's not a boring thing to say. So I'm <laughs> and is that why here, you're Bob. saying I hope it? You're is, that the re is that the reason you're no, saying it? Because no, it's a fascinating thing to say? Because when I look at the polls, which is what you were talking about, mm -hmm. and I see how close it is, and I think exactly how will that work out if it continues on that path, I think Obama will just win. But I think something else might be going on, and that is that there really is a, 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 an inaccuracy to the polls for various reasons, mm -hmm. and that uh, there really is a feeling uh, swelling toward uh, Romney with respect to the economics and maybe the Benghazi uh, scandal mm -hmm. is uh, seeping into the national consciousness, and that... Uh, it'll really break, and it'll be a clear win for Romney. Well, here's another thing: is there is going to be another employment report, right? I don't know. And and I think now I don't know if you're like a, a BLS truther and you think there was something shady about the last unemployment figures. Are you a BLS truther? You know, I don't really trust these numbers. I feel like they're working on the numbers, but I'm not uh, deep into the the um, mechanisms. You're not the Donald running. Trump of the BLS. I, I don't, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not into researching that. I, I'm skeptical about everything I hear about anything, including the polls. So mm -hmm. I think that the people in power try to hold on to power. So naturally, to the extent that they can influence the numbers, they will try to do that. And then there are these supposedly <coughs> neutral, somewhat independent bodies. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm just not in a position to tell you how independent I really believe they are. Okay, well, here's here's... What I think may be good news for Romney in the next employment report, especially if you're not a BLS truther, like the the unemployment, the numbers used to calculate the unemployment rate, which is based on household surveys, surveys of workers and or aspiring workers or people who have given up. Mm -hmm. um, they're very noisy. They've always fluctuated a fair amount month to month compared to the surveys of business people which are used to to produce the numbers about total number of jobs, right? This is something people often don't understand. They say, this many jobs were created and the unemployment rate is now this. Well, those numbers come from totally different places, and that's why you can get these weird, uh, that's one of the reasons you can get these weird discrepancies. Now, the household survey, which yields the unemployment rate, mm -hmm. is known to be noisier, to fluctuate up and down, and I, I think it, it is, it is, uh, it had been, in the previous couple of months, somewhat below the number you'd expect based on the business people survey. So, so it, the, it had been noisy on the low side. And then last month, it was probably noisy on the high side. And because in the long run, it tends to regress toward the mean, uh, mm -hmm. you know, noise averages out, I mm -hmm. think this means that the last number we got, 7.8, was high, what was more favorable to Obama than the true number. And for that reason, the chances are that this next report <clears throat> um, is going to be closer to the true number, and so it's going to look like the unemployment rate rose, and I think that that can be and bad. And what day but, does that come out? Um, I don't know, but it's got to come. Doesn't it come out before the end of the month? I don't know. I, I'm just uh, not a big follower of those numbers. I, I think it comes out at the very end of the but, but in any event, the election's not till like the sixth or something, or so. So there, it will come out, um, or, or so, or the seventh maybe. The um, it'll come out, and I'm and I'm predicting that it'll be no better than seven point eight, and probably worse. So that is a factor. That'll that'll hurt Obama, I take. Yeah, it. and what I do you think's going to happen with this uh, Libyan? Uh, scandal. How well, you keep, bad do you, you think keep thinking it's run out of gas. I, I think they have to keep finding new documents or something to keep it alive. I mean, they they've been you know new emails came out a couple of days ago and the Fox News a report that came out a day or two ago about what was really going on and that there were drones and on the um, Sunday the, the, morning wait show, I missed this one you'll have to I, I've kind of I've kind of tuned out of this whole thing but well, you, what, but if it comes out what I was hearing discussed on the Sunday one of, I think one of the Sunday morning shows I guess it was Fox News Sunday uh, was the, and there was a Fox News report and there's a thing of fo only Fox News really following it and the other 
uh, media ignoring it, but there was a story that there were drones overhead when they were calling in for help, and uh, Chris Wallace kept asking uh, senators who were on the show, who were on the um, uh, Senate uh, Intelligence Committee, uh, whether those drones were armed, and they just wouldn't answer, and Chris Wallace asked them a couple of times, uh, were the drones armed, and they wouldn't answer, so, uh, you know, later in the show, Britt Hume just came out and said, uh, they, they must have been armed. I mean, the inference has to be that they were armed, uh, that Obama knew they were armed, and that a decision was made that had to be Obama's decision uh, not to help those those two guys. Oh, this seems, like, this I, seems like a huge reach. You're saying... Why? Well, first of all, why did, in a chaotic situation like that, using drones effectively is no piece of cake. I mean, these guys shot... Then why don't they answer and say they... These were, guys shot the ambassador up close and personal. They didn't assassinate him from a distance, okay? So first of all, I mean, they violated the, uh, the consulate, right? They right, were in the, the consulate. the SEALs were fighting off 100 well, to fine, 200 fine, attackers... But this, this, this was almost hand-to-hand -hand -hand combat, and so you tell me how you use a drone to kill the attackers uh, how did without two killing guys, the attack. How did two guys kill 60 attackers? How did... Which two guys killed 60 attackers? The two SEALs. There were 60 attackers killed? Killed by two guys. Two guys killed 60 attackers. They were they fought off 100 to, 100 to 200 attackers for many hours, during which time, uh, from what I've heard, there were hundreds of people who could see what was happening, who were involved in a chain of uh, uh, surveillance, and uh -huh. there were drones overhead, coordinates were called in, and Obama had to be involved in that. And during the time theory? when those two men were fighting off those attackers, 30 and staffers from inside the consulate were able to escape. So they saved 30 lives. And they disobeyed orders. They were told to stand down, those two guys. But they heard the calls for help, and they went anyway. I mean, I think the story of those two guys going, knowing they weren't, they were told not to do it. Why were they told not to do it? Were Why these drones anyway? Were these drones under the command of the CIA? I don't know who. I don't think the well, CIA. Well, in which case, in which drones. case, the call goes to Petraeus before it gets to Obama. That's one thing. And but secondly, like, uh, what is your? If your scenario is like, okay, we can fire these drones, and we're pretty darn sure it'll work, and kill these guys who are trying to kill our ambassador. If your scenario is that that's the option that was presented to Obama or anybody in the story, and they said, no, let's not do it, what's your theory about why they would say, no, let's not do it? I, you want to know what my theory would be about Yeah, that? Yeah, I do want your theory. It would be that they were so concerned about never sending in any boots on the ground into Libya and that they wanted to keep that neat and clean uh, so that there could be a criminal attack on some of our guys who would get mm. killed, and that would be mm. sad, and we would call it a tragedy and say we're going to investigate that and bring to justice the people who did it. But they uh. didn't want to turn it into a military fight. They didn't want to violate and the image. They didn't drones want to lose don't the have image boots. That... Drones don't have boots. This no, wouldn't have been boots on the ground. Did. We the used air power did. in Libya from the beginning. That was what right. the intervention right. was. That was the way of doing it, right. So that so that's a separate question is why... Why couldn't they even do anything from the air? Now, if you want to say right, they couldn't do right. anything. Right, but how can you say it was because they didn't want to have boots on the ground? I, think I mean, once, drones don't have yeah, boots. Once, once uh, Gaddafi was deposed, we didn't keep shooting people from the air. We wanted to say that we won, that it was resolved. And isn't that great? And, Obama did all of this without sending in the military. And without unless, sending anyone on the ground. And unless I'm mistaken, one of the theories... Well, I mean, we have the facts. You know, it's one but thing... But wait, but wait. Tell me if I'm wrong. I may be wrong. But isn't one of the theory... Was, wasn't one of the early theories that this attack was payback for a drone strike that had, in fact, killed an extremist, uh, an Al-Qaeda-affiliated extremist associated with this group, I guess, and my understanding was that that was in Libya, in which case we were using drones recently to kill people in Libya. I could be wrong. Maybe it's a, f a friend of theirs in who got killed in Yemen. But I thought the well, deal was we killed okay. this guy in Libya. All right, but the point is... Well, no, not we but. If, if, I, if what I said is right, all right, I think there are parts apart. of All right, I think there are parts of Libya, not Benghazi, or are there? Where were, uh, there are parts of Libya, I think, that we haven't really 
resolve the original dispute and, the, and that are that are uh, right. We were uh, killing uh, people uh, in Libya, I think. Okay, but look, m m here's my point. We have a set of facts that we know a certain amount, but not more than that, that mm -hmm. raise a bunch of questions. Uh, Ron Johnson, my senator, was just asking a series of questions. I could read you the questions about the, the questions that arise from what we do know so far. We want answers. I mean, uh, Ron Johnson was saying the American people deserve to know. There are questions here that need to be answered. Now, you can ask me those questions and see if I can come up with some theories of why Obama would do that. And, you know, I can try to jump through those hoops, but that's really beside the point. I mean, the question is, the point is, there are questions. There are facts that raise questions. And we deserve to know the answer. Yeah, but this is a whole different level of conspiracy theorizing. It's one thing to say that once the thing had happened and, and the ambassador was dead, they, 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 they didn't for political attack? reasons want to call it a terrorist right. attack, fine. No, but, no, no, but, but for you no, to but say I'm that in the during, midst of it, they during. did all these Machiavellian calculations and said, let's let the ambassador d d die, that just seems to me... You know, I think, can I just say, I think that yes. they didn't count on those two SEALs going in. That they thought, these guys are going to get killed, and quickly, mm -hmm. uh, just steal yourself, that's going to happen, and we'll have to fix it after that. But then those two SEALs, who were told to stand down, decided they were going to answer the people who were calling for help, and they went in on their own. Uh, and they fought, and it went on for hours. And the people in the White House had to have been watching that for hours, and it wasn't happening quickly. And that kind of blew the plan for how to how to get through the attack. And then after, and if they watched that, and then after that, they came out and said over and over that it had to do with uh, uh, a protest about that video. And remember, that guy who made the video is in in jail now. They're holding him. I mean, yeah. these are some weird things that they did. They went to a lot of trouble to keep trying to get us to focus on the video. Now, that was a lie, right? There's some strange. What the video thing. was a lie? Wait, well, wait. Actually, I thought uh, the statement that it was that the attack was based on the video was a lie. As I said, you I'm not that. paying. I'm not paying that well, close attention to this. That. But Anne, let me let me just ask. I mean, there was this piece in the New York Times about a week ago that that was, I guess, you know, resulted from fairly thorough investigation, where they said, actually, the truth turns out, at the, you know, seems to lie somewhere between, in other words, the film did instigate this, but it was this group, I, I think Ansar al-Sharia or whatever it's called, mm -hmm. that, that, that got, got aroused by the video. But, you know... Obama going, going to the UN and saying it was all about the video and apologizing uh, for the video... Uh, Susan Rice going on. He didn't apologize for the damn video, and give me a break. Oh, uh, he called it. Uh, you know, he he spent a lot of uh, of prestige denouncing some stupid video. Rather you, you than don't, you don't think that video deserves denunciation, Anne? Do you do you I embrace it, it or have no feelings for it? I think the it, internet. Uh, I, do you I, think a reasonable person denounces it or not? I think it's one of many idiotic videos. That sounds the like internet. denunciation. You just called it idiotic. That's like a negative evaluation, I would not, right? Yeah, I, I don't. I would not use my position if I were president. Or I would like to know why our president used his position to denounce an idiotic YouTube video. There how are about, millions Anne, of YouTube videos How about the stupid. possibility that it was to dispel the widespread misconception in the Muslim world that the film represented the policy of the U.S. government and the sentiments of the American people? Well, how about that? I'm kind of happy to have my president dispelling that misconception. Do, do you like the filmmaker in, in uh, prison? No, well, our, well our in, no, no, that seems kind of weird, and I would like to know more about the, the origins and the financing of the thing, which still remains cloudy. So, no, I... I Bob, I, can I just say, if, if it were a Republican, if Bush had gotten himself in this fix, mm -hmm. would you be defending him? You know, I'm glad you said that, because the reason... I, I, I have not been paying much attention to this, is I actually have a very consistent philosophy about these kinds of things, which is bad stuff comes out of the blue and happens. Nobody was expecting that attack the day before, and it's easy to look back and second guess. And, 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 and there were liberals who did the but, same thing. I'm not, let me finish. There were liberals who did the same thing in 9-11 and brought out these memos and said Bush should have known, and I was not among them because that's mm -hmm. bullshit. It's bullshit. Whenever 
whenever something like that happens, you can always go find in, mm -hmm. in, a, in a large bureaucracy something that might have been taken as warning. Okay, but when you're but running, that, but when you're, let me finish. But when you're actually running an organization, and and and, and, and you got to do it moment by moment, and there's the fog of war and everything else. I just think second guessing is way too easy. So the answer to your question is: If it had been a Republican president, it wouldn't made a damn bit of difference in my reaction. I've never gone for this kind of bait. Okay, well uh, I'll accept that as a, a statement of your consistent policy. I mean, it is. I, I feel you will like not find liberals... me asking why Bush didn't know about 9/11. It's okay. Bullshit. Well, look, when you go, go to the run up to 9/11 or the run up to this attack, uh, that's the pre pre attack period. You know. Uh, Osama bin Laden determined to strike in America. Bush should have done something. What could he have done? Why and there is, is more mobile? all right. And there were uh, and there was that kind of question for, asked about Benghazi for for better defense in, in Benghazi. Those were somewhat different situations because we knew the places that needed to be defended. We had particular personnel there who were asking to be defended, and they were told no. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's the pre period. Let's compare those two. I don't think they're exactly comparable. But compare. then there's during the attack. It was a uh, what was done during that attack in Benghazi? What decisions were made? What could have been done? Why did they do what they do? The American people have a right to know. And then there's the after period in which we got, I think, lies. Why did they lie? I think we deserve to know the answer to that. And if Obama is reelected, we'll have this will be like Watergate infecting the presidency, a cancer on the presidency. I mean, I actually hope Obama loses so that this isn't infecting the presidency of the man that we're currently relying on to be the president. Well, uh, I disagree. I mean, I think, um, you know, we, we deserve to know what information there is. You're right. Um, and, and I don't think, look, the one thing that I don't think is impossible of the several things you believe is that um, that afterwards there was there there was some political calculation involved in how they characterized the attack I think that's possible but but that's very different from what you've been saying which is that during the, during the attack while this ambassador's life is on the line they're doing these political calculations that that seems it's not just that it's too cynical it's that it seems to me to greatly underrate the effect of the fog of war and to, and to totally misconstrue what it's like to be reacting to highly chaotic events in real time. Okay, can, can I just ask one question then? Sure. Because you gave me a straight answer to the other question. Mm -hmm. If it turned out that Obama made a decision not to send military help to the consulate because it would hurt his re-election chances, mm -hmm. you would agree he should be voted out of office. Yes. Okay. If you can, if you can, if you can give me. If that were true, if he that should were be true. voted out of office. If he said, "Let this ambassador die so that I can win the election," yes. He said it in more elegant. You know, he has such a way with words. I'm sure he could have put that a little better. I think. No, but that's but, but why. you're saying. But I'm saying, if he thought that, if he made that decision, right. if he said. If his calculation was, let's let this ambassador die because so I can my, be, obviously. I have to be able to say, I, did, I killed Osama bin Laden. I won the war. You know, the war on terror. Uh, Al-Qaeda is on the run. You know, those but, but, and, here, here's one problem. Here's one problem with that. Getting an ambassador killed is considered a real failure by the executive branch. Okay, letting an ambassador get killed, that's the way it's played out, right? It's been this thing he had to play defense on. It's like not a good thing. It's not considered a success in the war on terrorism right. to have your ambassador killed by a terrorist. So the American people have a right to know, right? You yeah. agree with that, too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and if you say what happened actually hurt him, then, so why did, you know, I would say that suggests there was an other... An other alternative that seemed more harmful at the time, and he chose this harm rather than that one. He chose to allow these people to die, and wait, sat wait, there I and watched the it for hours. Follow, wait, say that again. What's the logic? Well, you're saying since the death of the ambassador hurt Obama, yeah. that suggests that he actually would have done everything to try to save him to avoid that harm. But I'm saying yeah. not if the harm that would occur would be even worse. And I think that the ambassador... But wait, what is the harm of not getting his ambassador killed? What would be wrong? You think, you think if Obama said, hey, our ambassador was in danger, but I called in these drone strikes and we saved him, that's no. a political liability? Okay. Because, listen, 
the ambassador, I think, would still have died, but some other people wouldn't have. Well, died. now you're changing your story. We've been no, talking no. for the last five minutes about Obama having said, I, I, I'm letting the, you know, your, your, your contention that maybe Obama said, well, I'll let the ambassador die. As Obama would say, check the transcript. Well, I, I kept that. running that by you and attributing it to you, and you didn't say anything. No. We, we, should we should check the transcript. Here's the distinction. Here's the distinction that you're yeah. missing. You're, you keep going back to Stevens, in particular, being killed. He was gravely wounded early on. Mm -hmm. There were other people there. There were a lot of people in the consulate, and the two SEALs went in to try to help those people, and they fought off attackers for many hours. I mm -hmm. think a decision was made early on that basically these people are going to have to die. We can't do anything effectively enough, so we won't. But then the two SEALs went in, and there was a, a, a prolonged firefight in which these guys were tremendously successful. Two guys killed 60 of the attackers, and it kept going. Well, they were waiting for backup. They never got the backup. A decision was made not to give them backup. Uh, I guess, it, it, you well, know. I don't, I, like I said, I haven't been following this. I can't vouch for anything you're saying. It's starting it's, to, I must say, it's starting to sound uh, well, like I, a very interesting story. If you're right about well, this stuff, I want to start paying attention. You've got to read the Fox News story. And but, I think that you have to be fair-minded and think that we really deserve to know the answer. And if it doesn't, I think it's terrible that it has to come out so close to the election. But if Obama is reelected, whether Obama is reelected or not, more will come out later. You know, it's like Watergate. Nixon got reelected by a lot, and then right. it ruined his second term. That was a terrible thing to have happen to the country, right? You don't want anything like that to happen again. No, but it's not going to. I mean, I mean, the only thing that, that could possibly compare with Watergate it, that could come out of the scandal is if what I thought you were saying was true, which is that Obama says, I want to let this ambassador get killed. That's not going to come out. First of all, there, there wouldn't be a record of it, if it were the case that that was his internal but that deliberation. that was my question. If you check the transcript, you'll see I didn't specify Okay, but what is, it that, what is it that could come out of this that compares with Watergate? That uh, Obama, first of all, didn't respond to requests for better defense. That during the attack, uh, orders were given for no one to go in and try to help. And then when two SEALs did go in and kept up a defense for a while, that it was being watched. And a, an ongoing decision was being made not to do anything to back Why? these guys. Why were these you decisions? You know that, that, uh, that Woods, one of the what? SEALs, his father is going around talk. Well, he got really angry after meeting with Obama, and he's going around saying, you know, he Obama murdered his son. Well, you know, that's you know a harsh way and to put it, as you may know, parents of children who have just gotten killed, you know, sometimes lack complete detachment. Um, they wouldn't be the first parent that was that was right. quite outraged and 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 may or may not have been you know perfectly accurate in the focus of, of the well, outrage. I would say just but here's my question to you: It seems to me that everything you're describing, if you're going to say it's comparable to Watergate, so far you failed. Unless well, you can, uh, unless you can come up with this one. a sinister motivation to accompany it. In other words, if they just said don't send them in because they'll die and it's a lost cause. That's just, a, that's just a tactical judgment that was wrong. That's not comparable to Watergate. What would be comparable to Watergate? What are you saying? Nobody I mean, died even, in Watergate. What? Nobody Look, died. Look, people in die as a result of judgments all the time, people but it's not on the People die all the time, and Obama sits there in the White House and he points to his list of people that are going to be killed. And, and what? It's and all very what, cool what and motivation, uh, cold. What motivation are you imputing? to Obama or some other high official that would lead this to be a Watergate level scandal. I mean, come on, you keep, you know, well, let's I hear think it. certainly the cover up after the fact is like Watergate. The cover up covering and what the, up? The president involved in lies. The president being involved in in, in lying about what What is the actual what is what is the lie that that about the video? Well, I don't know. I mean, you know, the, the 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 New York Times story I saw within the, the New last York week. Times is in the tank for Obama. Well, okay, okay, fine. Read you know. read the Fox News story, and it's a shame that only Fox News is doing it. I know you can say, oh well, Fox News wants Romney, uh, but I think it's a major story, and we're being deserved by the media that isn't looking into it, and that is covering for Obama. I think okay. it's really. I, I think as my senator said, the American people deserve to know. I want to know. I want the questions answered. 
the the issue of what I'm accusing or what my theories are, that's that's nothing. I'm just a person that is saying I'd like to know and I want the truth. And I think we deserve the truth. I agree. We can end on a note of Concord. We, we've been agreeing throughout this whole, uh, <laughs> this whole ordeal, Bob. <laughs> I think there was a moment of disagreement <laughs> recently, but, but it's now been over now. You, uh, send me the link to the Fox piece. Okay. I would like to see how you've been spending your reading time. Um, but I have to go prepare for this storm. Okay, okay. And if I get killed in this storm, man. Well, never mind. Let this let this uh, video think, uh, tape be a legacy for you. <laughs> yeah, and I think we'll have to ask questions about who it was that you know who it was that chose to let me you know not intervene and save me. I think I think some serious questions will have to be raised about that. I'm not pointing the finger at you, Anne. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, okay, it would be kind of okay. weird. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, but thank you. That was, uh, you know, 20 minutes into this, I was thinking it had been pretty low decibel, but then now I'm not thinking. Because you got me talking about law. When you get me in my law professor. It is, no, it isn't that, me. Anne. It's that there's something about you that always gets me to shout and scream. And I, and I... I know, you know, I went back and looked at an old one that I did with you. And it, it, when we were talking about Trayvon Martin, and you just uh, kind of, I don't know. I guess I, I don't know. There are people who think you are a provocateur. I'm very calm. I'm trying to agree with you. I'm well, you say reasonable. things in a calm way. It's just that they're crazy. Um, I don't think what I'm saying here is crazy. So, but well, again, check. We'll the have to check the transcript to see if you you said what I thought you said, which I thought was crazy. But I think if you think I've been crazy and provocative, if you go back and really look at exactly what I said, you will find that everything mm -hmm. makes perfect sense. <laughs> and then the question is, then why does it make me so mad? <laughs> that's right. the mystery. That's the mystery. I think that's how I'll spend this it's evening, is wondering evening. why I get so agitated at your perfectly reasonable <laughs> assertions and mm -hmm. insinuations. I think that's okay. what I'll do. So that's listen, me, but, but thank mystery. you. And you're, wait, just for the record, you're predicting who wins the election? I say there are two options. Either Obama will <laughs> narrowly win or oh. Romney will win by a lot. <laughs> Obama narrow or Romney a lot. I predict Romney will not win by a lot. Okay, so you want to say Romney by a narrow margin? And then well, we have to define narrow. I predict Romney by no... Oh, no, I'm not predicting him. I'm predicting that he won't win by more than I thought that, like, early in the night, on election night, it's too close to call, and then we have to stay up past our bedtime, and it's mm -hmm. like, should I stay up, or is it still going to be unknown in the morning? That that's too close to call. If you have yeah. to go to bed and you don't think you can stay up until the and they're not calling it and stuff like that. If that it, happens, that's too that's close. That'll be a close election. Well, why don't we have an electoral vote margin? I'm predicting that Romney will not win by more than uh, 20 electoral votes. You're saying he will. You're saying if Romney wins, it will be by more than 20 electoral votes. More than 20? Yeah. Um, like that's only 290. Uh, okay, I'll say that. You'll say that's, that. That's the bet. That's okay. the bet. In other words, uh, but but if but if Obama wins by a, a small margin, then well, I think we agree that Obama could win by a very small margin. You're in the range. Your bet is if Romney wins by uh, one or, or zero to twenty electoral votes, and then all the Obama wins go to me, and all the Romney over twenty go to me. This is getting too confusing for me. Well, I, I <laughs> would say. Transcript. I would say that if that if somebody wins by more than 30 electoral votes, it, it, I would say that if somebody wins by more than 20 electoral votes, it'll be Obama. Oh, but okay. Not... So you you have the back end. You have the uh, if if Obama wins by a lot, you've mm -hmm. got you've got that. And if well, Obama wins that's by a lot, you can have that. I'm I'm just I'm just betting that I think it'll be close in any event, and I and I don't know who will win. I hope it's not close. I hope we get a clear answer so that uh, the country can have some peace for a little while. Right. Okay. This has been crazy. This has been crazy. We don't want the whole country talking like you and I have been talking. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Calm, thank you. Thank you, Anne. Okay. So, so um, go vote in Wisconsin and, and uh -huh. get all your right-wing friends in Madison. <laughs> and maybe New Jersey with the uh, storm will go the other way, because I noticed you guys voted for Governor Christie. How did that happen? It seems to me a Republican. This would be, then the storm would be God's wrath for us voting Republican, yes. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Yeah.
Okay. Watch, See you next watch time. out for the rain. Okay. Will do. All right. Thanks. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.